This is an open floor. I want to know something about both of you that I don't know. <laughs> see, the, no. see the skeletons on this, in the closet, yeah, on this table, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so in one of many conversations that me and James have, you know, we were talking and what we were speaking about was perception can be misconstrued. Misconstrued? <laughs> Mis misconstrued. <laughs> misconstrued. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, like, yeah, so like, and what I mean by that is what um, people think about you may not necessarily be the case. So... In my, in my case, people may think I'm Mr. Macho. I'm all work, no play. You know, but I know how to play. I'm a funny dude. I make you laugh all the time. I make you laugh all the time. I'm the funniest on the table, bro. Why are you looking at me? You were the funniest on the table? How? Yeah, I'm not going to Yeah, but Fem makes us laugh because he's awkward funny. It's not funny funny. You keep saying it's awkward funny. What is awkward funny? <laughs> No, like, like <laughs> what, what is awkward funny? Look, awkward listen, funny it's, it's, from, it's from his actions. Mm. So if we was to say now, Femme, dance, automatically it would be awkward because you can't dance. Who told you I can't dance? Okay, what's the meme, <laughs> <laughs> This guy is a drawer. <laughs> what's the meme? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but all jokes aside, yeah, like, obviously, um, this, is, this is the opportunity for, I feel like, everyone to just, to just um, speak about themselves, you know what I mean, and, and let people know who you are and um, what message you're ultimately trying to give to the world, you know? Um, so I'll start, I'll start with myself. Um, obviously, my name's Femi Ilesanmi, you know? Uh, I play for Bournemouth Football Club. You know, and and the message I'm trying to give to the world is just through all the experiences I've had in I've had in life, I'm trying to give back to the next generation so they don't make the same mistakes I made. And that's via football, it's where I can relate, you know what I mean? Um I want people to know that I have got a lighter side to me. I'm not serious, serious all the time, you know what I mean? And yeah, I'm just out here trying why, to... Why would, why would people say you're serious? Well, you know, like, when I speak to you, for example, or I speak to Manny, and then Manny's telling me, yeah, people always asking me questions, Femi, like, oh, what's he like? What's he like? Like, well, I'm cool, man. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> to someone that doesn't know you, why would people say that you're serious? If they, if, if they don't know you, would you say that you've got a persona, your body language, how you maybe, are, maybe, you're serious? Maybe so. And, and, and I can accept the fact that people say that I'm serious because I, I, I am, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that I can't relate to you. I, can't, I don't have downtime or I don't have a laugh, you know what I mean? Um, I think life's about balance and, yeah, it's about... I'm gonna drop a big word that you might not understand. But it's about getting in the equilibrium, yeah? Equi what? <laughs> equilibrium. <laughs> <laughs> Equili you don't even know what it means. Of course I know what it means. Okay, go on. I'm gonna say what that means. Okay, wait, what's the equi equi equilibrium? Equilibrium. It basically means balance. Okay, cool. Yeah. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. about striking the equilibrium between, between work and play, you know what I mean? And I, I might be leaning more towards the work side, but I just thought, I'll let people know that, look, man, I'm relatable. You can, you can have a chat with me. I'll chat to you guys, you know what I mean? So, that's me out of the way, but who is, um, who is James Alarby? James Alarby. So... James Alabi, footballer, but 
my actual name, obviously you lot will know, is Femi. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as a Nigerian, we have tens and thousands of names. So my family call me Femi, but to the world, everyone just says James. I don't like describing myself as a footballer. I feel like when I describe myself as a footballer, people automatically treat me a different way, maybe better than the rest, and I, I never want to see myself better than anyone. Mm -hmm. So if I'm speaking to someone that I met, met on the street, girls, I'll never say footballer. You know the man them that chat to girls and they have to say, I'm a footballer. Yeah, what do you do? I play football. Yeah, you, so you, quit, you, yeah. you hop in the DMs yeah. and then you, you, you know, have to make it known that... Do you get what I'm trying to say? But I'll, like, I'm the type that I'd rather you not know that I'm a footballer because that way I'll know if you like me as James Alarby or if you like me as the footballer. footballer. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So I don't like label, labelling myself as a footballer. Um, what I'm trying to show to the world is just don't take life too serious, whatever that is. And that's because of the experience that I've been through with football and outside football. I feel like a lot of us in this day and age, like we take things too seriously. Um, and I'm a firm believer of there's going to be dark days, there's going to be rainy days, but what happens when it rains? The sun comes out. So my main thing is, if you're going through certain situations in life, you're always going to come out on the other side, but it has to come from within you first. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So for me, I love fun. I'm always smiling. I'm always happy. I'm not saying I don't have dark days, but I know that the days are going to come where I'm smiling and I'm joking about. So for me, I'm just a person that it's just a fun, bubbly character. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person of energy. I'm a person of happiness, so I say for me, that's, that's, that's what I'm like. Mets? Me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Look at the way I reacted just so I say your name. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'll go by the name Medili or I'm Congolese. E. And with, with me, um, is basically what you see is what you wait, get. Wait, is that all your names? You said Medili or you're Congolese. I'm sure there's something else. There's, a, there's another name. <laughs> there's another name. There has to be. All right, cool. There's a, there's a double name. All right, cool. The African name is Okofo. No, uh, oh, I wasn't even thinking of that one, but yeah, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's three, there's three. Like, so Medi, Okofo, Leo, but everyone know, like, knows me as Medi, Leo. With me, it's, it's simple. Like, what you see is what you get. And by saying that, it's like me, I'm a bubbly person, I'm a character whether that's in a change room or around my friends, family. And what I'm trying to show to the world and to the younger generation is, like, be yourself. Like, everyone tries to fit in, like, whether it's playing football or being with people who are, you know, famous or well-known people, you want to try to fit in, just be yourself, because sometimes a lot of youngers and a lot of people are trying to... Um, not trying to live by their means, like, trying to live out their means, just mm -hmm. trying to fit in, mm -hmm. whether that's spending money or just doing something stupid that they're going to regret. But I'm just saying, just be yourself, you know. People love people who are themselves, and that's it, really. That's it for me. Nah, that's proper, man. And I think it's good that we, um, we, sh we shared that, man, because I feel like people need to know who we really, who we really are, you know what I mean, and, and what, what this platform is about. I would say, like, I know you quite well both of you, from playing football, from being around each other, having nights out, holidays, whatever it is. But tell me something that I don't know about you. Because I feel like in this day and age, there's a lot of things that people go through and it's difficult for them, but they're going through certain things that are personal to them, which the world don't know. So this is an open floor. I want to know something about both of you that I don't know. <laughs> see, the, no. see the skeletons on this, in the closet, yeah, on this table, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Me, yeah. that face. Go on. Wow. I don't know. What don't you know about me? Um, well, 
there's, there's, there's a few obstacles uh, that I've had to overcome, you know, to, to get to where I am today. Um, uh, one thing about my journey is everything was self, self. So what I mean by that is I, I had to do everything by myself. Um, I had support. I had support, no doubt about it. But um, even in terms of getting into into football, I picked up the phone. I rang John Stewart, Dagenham and Redbridge, you know, which a lot of people don't know, you know. And it wasn't just the one phone call. It was me ringing his phone for three or four months consistently, him trying to swerve me. And then I think one day he just gave up and was like, oh, do you know what? Just come in, just come in. And... That's how I got signed to Dagenham Redbridge. I, I went on trial. Um, what's so funny is that what's so funny is that we played the reserve game against Tottenham, and I was on trial. And I remember I was like 18, 19. Mm -hmm. and I've come out in the reserve game and I've seen like Idaho Johnson, Young's Gabon, and I, and I'm thinking, bro, I'm on trial. Like these people don't want me to get signed. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they played me centre half, but I've never played centre half before. Before then, you know. So, anyway, I've played the game. I've done well. And after the game, John Steele was like, "Oh, you done really well. You done really well." But hand on my heart, I can't sign you. I'm like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "No, hand on my heart. I promise, I can't sign you. You've done everything you can do, but I just can't sign you." So, it was heartbreak for me, you know. And as I'm leaving his, his office, as I'm leaving, he, 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 he shouts back, Femi. So I turn around, literally while I'm by the door. Femi, turn around. How old are you? I say, I'm 18. He goes, my goodness, 18 years old. No, no, no. You know what? You know what? I want to sign you. I want to sign you. I say four years older. Yeah. Because oh, he's a ringer. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Ringer means you look older than your age, basically. Yeah, do you know what? Do you know what? I'm going to own it. Yeah, yeah, he thought I was a ringer, innit? Yeah, yeah. You know, so... He, that's why he probably didn't want to sign me at first. But then when he realised that I'm young, he was like, oh, we'll sign you. And that's how I got into, into the game, you know? So I feel like that's, that's a story... Um, that a lot of people don't know about me, but that's how I got into this game, and I've, I've maintained somewhat ever since, you know. You basically forced your way in. I hook or crook, my guy. <laughs> Lady, yeah. talk to me. One thing I don't know. You don't know. It could be good or bad. I went, f this was 2000 and... Seven, eight. I went through um, a little period where um, I just didn't want to play ball because of um, the United situation. But not a lot of people know this because, like, like I said, I'm a character. And when I come to training or when I'm around my friends, I laugh and joke. So people don't really see the other side when I'm at home, just thinking about what could have happened. Could you elaborate on the United situation? Yeah. Um, well, when I was in the youth team at Colchester, like, they had a um, school of excellence. I was just a boy doing his thing, like, playing football. I was loving football. I was doing well. And um, United come to watch a few times. Um, you know, they even invited me to go and see the stadium. I didn't, I didn't even get to train with them, kind of thing, because I just thought it was going to happen. But then hearing um, about the situation that the agent didn't want to share fees with another agent because of the move. And after after it broke down, it was like, yeah, there was a period. Is it that agent? Yeah. You know you know the agent. I'm not going to say no names. And, and then there was a period, like, obviously, I'm, I'm young at the time. I'm still, like, 17. And so I'm just thinking, I don't want to play ball no more. Because at the time, when I look back at it, I don't, I don't dwell in it like, like that. But when I look back, that could have been a situation where my family are patterned now. But there would be pat and pattern, if you know what I mean, if things would have went the way it should have. But yeah, there was just a period, like I didn't, period of time, I didn't want to play ball. I didn't even, I didn't even go in 
to the youth team games and just chilled at home for a few days thinking about it. But then I picked myself up again. Then, you know, I was on the phone to Joe Dunn, who, who was my youth team manager at the time. He was there, he, like he was ringing me, he was there at the time. So, so there was um, that support? Yeah, there was that support that, you know, made me come back playing football. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you, would you say you lot have healed from them stories? Oh yeah, I, I've healed massively, man. You can't, you, you, them things there, you can't dwell on it or look, look back and thinking what if, what if. Them things there, when it's done, it's done. Dwelling it for that two weeks or what not, then let it go. Because if you, if you do that, then it's going to keep haunting you, man. Yeah, I, was, I would say everything I've been through <coughs> in my career has made me the person who I am. Right now, I'm in a position where I can actually become the person I want to be, you know? Um, so I've got, no, I've got no regrets. I'm grateful for the obstacles that I had to overcome, you know? I'm grateful for the trials and the tribulations, you know? <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't regret a thing. What about you? Me? One thing you don't know about me. It's... it's First of all, I want to thank you for sharing your experiences. I'm going to take it away from football. And um, the thing for me, I'd say I was about 16. And I was at Stoke City at the time. And I'm going to let you lot in. <clears throat> I haven't had a good relationship with my dad. So, growing up, he was present. Then it got to a stage where he wanted to move back to Africa. Um, and he went away, and he came back. And at the time, I was a scholar, and I, I said to myself, I want to get a car. I was 17. And I wanted to get a car. So he, I said to him, Dad, I want to get a car. He's gone to me, OK, pass your test. So I remember like, my scholar money at the time wasn't a lot, and I used every penny, last penny I had for my lessons. What's, what's, what's scholar money like um, in Stoke City? To be fair, no, OK, this is going to sound big time, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to sound, sound big time, but I actually didn't do a scholar. I went. <laughs> I, I signed a pro contract. <laughs> so I'm not going dis to disclose the money. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not going to disclose the money, but um, yeah, I, I was on a, a, a decent contract yeah. at the time. But furthermore, I still used all my money for the lessons. So I'm banging out the lessons, banging out all the lessons. And I, I failed my first test, failed my second test. Failed my third test, and then fourth test, I shouldn't have even passed, but I was failing, failing, failing at Stoke City, and then I said to myself, I realised the, the examiner was a Stoke City fan. God saved me that I had my tracksuit in my boot, so I put the tracksuit on. He's going, oh, oh you alright, mate? Well, so who did you play for? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, Stoke, Stoke, Stoke. <laughs> Bro, I still failed my test that day, but because I played for Stoke, you passed me, cool. <laughs> so my dad was coming back from Africa, and I like, rushed home, gone back to London, took the train back to London, like with my certificate, proper happy. And I showed my dad my certificate, and I've said to him, look, dad, I've got my certificate, can you get me a car now? But he had already had a conversation with my mum He's one of them dads that, from our background, I'm, I'm sure you'd know, they want us to be a lawyer, they want us to um, be a doctor or whatever. Or, or he, but he wanted me to live with him in Ivory Coast because he's got houses there and he wanted me to work under him in Ivory Coast. So I don't think he was happy with that. So Meds, man's gone to him and said to him, here's my certificate. Can I get my car? Let's say this is the paper. Get, get, get out of my face. And I'm like... <laughs> What? Do you know what I mean? Get, 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 get out, get out. And I'm like, what? He goes, you want me to get your car, but you play football. Tell your football club to go and buy your car. So at that point, there was a shift. 
Because I thought to myself, I've done everything I can. You told me I should pass my test and you get me a car. But then after that day, it was just like it wasn't the same. We already didn't have the best of relationships. But after that day, it was like we literally shifted apart. Wow. But I spoke to him about a week after. And I asked him again, why didn't you get me a car? Or why, why are you not helping me get the car? What, what, what have I done wrong? And this is when I said to myself, I had to make football. I had to make it in football because that moment he said to me, you think you're going to be a footballer, but you're never going to be a footballer. And this is my dad. So when he said that to me, that's when it clicked for me that I have to make it in football. So I'm not saying that I'm a footballer because of him, but it gave me that extra push. And for me to go through someone, something like that with my own father is something that I still haven't healed from because I had to grow up so young. I had to be the man of the house um, because he wasn't present. But football-wise, it was him that like, literally drove me to be the person that I am today. So where, where, are, where are you at in terms of your dad now? What's the relationship like? Don't speak. No, I haven't spoken to him in years. Um, and even if he does come, because he comes to the house now and then, but obviously I don't live at home. But even when he comes to the house, he, I haven't heard him say my name in about eight years. Do you feel like it can be repaired, the relationship? Hopefully it can, of course. Like, I love my dad. It's not something that I'd, I'd, I'd want to break. Um, I want to have a relationship with him. But I'm at that point where I've, I've had to grow up so early and I've got to be a man at the end of the day in terms of going about my business and doing what I need to do and, and be the person I am for the family because I've had to be the dad for the family. So, it's, But it's something that I would want to repair. It's not something that I'm, I'm, I'm not one of them people that says, ah, oh, F my dad, I don't want nothing to do with him. But yeah, it's something that is, is actively going on now. Do you know what, yeah? Um, on that story, yeah, I can't relate. I can't relate, you know? My dad's been ever-present, but... I've got experiences via people. So one of my closest friends, he had a funny relationship with his dad, Meds, as you know. And he, he, he was dad, he used to always say stuff like, what dad? I ain't got a dad. Stuff like that for banter, just to get laughs in the changing room, you know? Oh, what dad? I ain't got a dad. Nah, forget my dad, man. F my dad, all of this type of stuff. And... Um, he didn't want to mend the relationship with his dad, and I used to tell him to mend it. Anyway, cut the long story short, his dad got cancer. His dad got cancer. This is somebody we all know, yeah? His dad got cancer now. And it's now kind of... It's not, never too late, but it's like, wow, all this anger I felt towards my dad, now he's got cancer, and he's about to pass away, you know? I can't mend, mend, it. mend it, you know? And I know when his dad passed, how that impacted him, you know? I know, what that, I, know, I know how it affected him, you know? And he has to live with that, you know what I'm saying? He has to live with that. He did apologize for everything uh, to his father on his, on his deathbed, you know? But it shouldn't have to get to that. For, you, for, for, for someone to have to apologise, you know what I mean? And um, I've always used that story, you know, whenever people say they don't get along with their dad because death has no calendar, bro. Anything can happen at any time. And look, this is baller talk. We had to talk about football. This is life. This is... This platform's here to talk about anything, you know what I mean? And you have to act now, bro. You can't wait. And I know... It's not what you want to hear. I know you might be thinking, oh, not now, but bro, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence not, as not only your friend, but your brother by telling you, you have to start mending that relationship from now. 100%. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because like you said, we don't know what could happen tomorrow. We just don't know. So I would say just try and work on that, man. 100%. You know what I'm saying?
Ouais. Ah, oh, j'avais... Même... <laughs> <laughs> yes! The laugh is in! The laugh is in! <laughs> Everyone in cage have a laugh! Oh, God. That was a bit, that was we a just, bit. We needed some sad music to this. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> just wanted, um, there's another thing I wanted to touch up on. Um, obviously, playing football made us grow up quick. And um, we were saying that it's like, how did it make you grow up? Like, we had to mature and be, I, would, I wouldn't say adults, but you can say adults because we had to live, we had to move away from our house and live by ourselves. Like, how did it affect you? I wouldn't. I wouldn't say necessarily, like I, I told you a lot about my story already, I wouldn't say football made me grow up quick because of the situation I was living already at home. I felt like the situation with my dad made me grow up quick. Football just, I think it gave me the, the better side of life. So the growing up in terms of being a man and dealing with things that I shouldn't have to deal with at a young age, that was because of my dad. Football paved the way for me to go into another avenue of life. So what I mean by that is, you lot know, we grew up in, I grew up in a rough area. Football made me go and live away from home. I didn't have to grow up because we was in digs. And what I mean by digs is, is where you live with a family and they take care of you, but you're still playing for a football club. How many, how many digs? <laughs> <laughs> how many different digs have you lived in? Bro, digs, me. <laughs> I've been at too many clubs for my age. So I've, I'd say I've lived at like seven, eight digs. Seven, eight digs? Bro, digs are long, bro. See different types of shuffles pie you tasted yet? <laughs> <laughs> you have first pie, pie, pie and bash. <laughs> Different flavour. No sauce. <laughs> no sauce. Yo, with ketchup. <laughs> nah, gazy, gazy. Gazy. <laughs> Man's been eating shepherd's pie for years, bro. <laughs> Cottage pie, all of these stuff, like, even when I see it now, like, yeah. it's like trauma. Like, if I see shepherd's pie, I'm like, like, nah, G, I can't eat this. This is mad. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I wouldn't say I, I, I grew up through football. I did, don't get me wrong, but my family situation made me grow up. Football just made me um, see the lavish side of life. Bro, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, see that digs thing, yeah? Bro, I haven't lived in digs like that, but... Yeah, you haven't, yeah, because you've been nah, in London. I only, I, I've only lived in... I've only... In, when I was at South End, there's a like, 15 year old, I stayed in digs like once or twice. Okay. And um, when I went on loan to Histon, I stayed in digs as well. But my first experience at digs, yeah, I promise you, this is no, this is no word of a lie, yeah. So me and, me and my pal, um, Andre Blackman, we used to play for South End together. So obviously it was a bit of a journey, us traveling from London. So Fridays, sometimes they put us in the digs to play the game on Saturday. So one time we must have stayed there on Friday night, you know, and then um, woke up on Saturday morning and they made us like toast and all of that in it, yeah. So <laughs> they put me my plate like this, yeah, in my room, yeah. And then <laughs> I'm literally just about to eat it like this, yeah, like that. Andre busted my room door. He's like, Femi, Femi, Femi. I'm like, what? He's like, don't eat it, don't eat it. <laughs> Bro. He's like, don't eat. I'm like, why not? He's like, bro, the bread's molded. The bread's molded. <laughs> See? Bro. Because, no, but... It was the funniest thing ever. Like, I was like, no, nah, we can't eat that. You know what I mean? That was my experience, man. Imagine, like, there was getting, my digs, there was getting four bills, four bills for me and my boy that was living there. Like, like I said, 400 pounds is a lot of money a month, you know, for food. So when, when they're making all these cottage pies, shepherd's pie and all these things, like I even went to tell them, excuse me, like, I like this. Mm -hmm. like, well, they Bring even up. switched it up, Bring yeah. Up. Not, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, all the, all the bat squanga and dubba like all day thought they was making that. Like, 
my, my boy James Hammond used to bring like his mum used to cook in it. So he used, sometimes he used to bring a big pot, like, the pot of jollof rice and chicken and that, yeah. bring it back to digs and we used to yam it. Like. But I'm thinking, I said, one day I said, no, can you switch it up? Can we have this and that? They said, yeah, yeah. They only switch it up for one day. They made... But what, like, what, what do you expect them to cook if that's their culture, if that's their life? I know it's their culture, but uh, there's, if it's their culture, like, bring me some chili con carne or something. <laughs> Mostly, like, at least make something, make, make something, no. you get me? <laughs> They switched it up for one day, like, and then it was back to Shepherds. I said, no, I can't do this no more, man. And you know what they used to do? Yeah. They had bare sweets in the cupboard, didn't it? Mm. Like, so, man, see, after you have, like, dinner, like, you want, like, a little dessert or something. Mm-hmm. Or, like, or treat, like, you know, sweets or something. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, no, there's no treats. You know, one day, uh, I did have ball, like, we had a day off and they went to work. Something was telling me, mids, just go and check the cupboard, man. They're lying to you, go and check. Oh, and I bust open the cup, that's <laughs> chocolate, Twix, Snickers, sweet Skittles, Starburst. I'm thinking, so I've been chilling here for like four months, you lot are lying to me like this. <laughs> Bro, I'm not going to lie, I backed it. If they was going to come to me and say something, they, they said, oh, did he take sweets? I said, yeah, I took sweets. <laughs> Bro, you can't, do, you can't do that to us, man. Bro, you yeah. guys are going to think I'm lying. Another memory just come to me, about my big experience. So, I was... Um, 19 on loan to um, Histon, yeah, they were in a conference at the time, yeah. So I stayed in digs with like an a old, a old couple, you know. Mm-hmm. But in, Where's this guy? in my room, in my room, in my room, yeah, the um, computer was in my room, in it, mm-hmm. you know. So they used to like, when I go out or whatever for the day, they'll, that's the, they'll be the time to use the internet and whatnot. So, anyways, one day I must have gone out. You know, but I must have like come home like a bit early, like during the day, during the day. So I must have come in the door. I must have gone up to my room, yeah, opened the door, yeah. <laughs> I see the old man watching, watching porn, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I swear down, bro. <laughs> oh, ski. But no, bro, like, I just closed it straight away. <laughs> like, bro. What, did, did he clock you? Did, did he, yeah, did he see you? He saw me, man. So it was crazy. It was awkward, but but <laughs> it was awkward. <laughs> but but man, just act like it never happened, didn't it? Well, that's wait. that's the best. That's the only way to deal with stuff. Wait, wait, wait. So what? It didn't. If if it clocked you, it didn't even come up to you later on the day and say. Look, oh, what do you want to say? Say yeah, like. I'll just say so, say no, so, no, like, no, no, I was just, just, just leave it. We both know. Let's <laughs> not talk about it, man. Where was where was, oh, his, was, missus? Where was, was his missus? Where was Where was his missus? <laughs> oh, I promise you now, yeah, I'm not even lying. I'm not even lying. I walked up in the room, yeah. Bro, man was watching porn though in my bedroom. Well, his bedroom, but my bedroom, yeah. It was mad. That's mad. Yeah, digs it, digs it, digs it. No, what do you want to speak on? Ah, no, but, but it like, should just come and apologize yeah. and say, sorry like, that you saw this. Man was just... <laughs> No, I'm a liar though. I'm a liar though. You should come. Sorry, uh, like you saw yeah, this. Yeah. You get me? I was bro, in the bro. moment. Like uh, you get me? Like it was so funny. Wait, so you said it was your room? Yeah, the room I slept in. So wait, are you? <laughs> wait, wait. Do you mean to tell me <laughs> that we were sitting in front of the computer, the computer chair, and that? Uh, so <laughs> when when did you sleep in that bed next or that room next? Same day. <laughs> Bro, let me, so, you know, so no, wait, the man, the man might be no, 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 thinking no, no, about no, you, no, laying no, in your no, bed, thinking, no, no, no. like, oh, no. So, so, wait, so you mean to tell me that same night, wait, he's, bro. he's done the business. Bro, porn is a billion dollar business, bro. bro. <laughs> They're getting their billions from somewhere, bro. Mids. He slept in the same room that night. So he, so he had to have said, he had to apologise. Yeah. Because you're going to sleep. So where did you go when he done, like, obviously, while he was doing... Basically, there was, there was like, two digs. So um, there were some French, French boys that was, was on loan. Not on loan, that was signed to Histon at the time. And they didn't live far from us, from where I did, me and my other pal. So I just used to go to their house, like, spend the day there. Because at their house, it, wasn't a, it was their own house. house. It wasn't the digs, you know what I mean? So we used to just chill there and do our thing over there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, used to, I, just, went, I just went back there. Touching on this um, digs and stuff and football, yeah? And I just wanted to say, do you feel like you missed out on your teens through football? 
Yeah. Work is work is work, but do you yeah. feel like, you know, there was times when you thought like you wanted to enjoy? Yeah, I would say I wanted to enjoy, but I wouldn't say I missed out on a lot because mm. at the end of the day, like I said, footballers, I'd always used to like go back to London and I'm treated like a king because I'm a footballer. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it wasn't something that I think I missed out on because when I did go back, it was still an enjoyment because I'd see my friends because I was away from home. Maybe if I was in London, playing in London, I might say, yeah, I missed out on a lot. But when I went back home, it was always a vibe. It was always good energy. So I wouldn't say I missed out on a lot. Yeah, for me, um, it's about sacrifice. So from a young age, we had to learn. We had to learn sacrifice. Mm. We had to, we couldn't do what um, a normal 17-year-old, 18-year-old kid was doing, you know what I mean? We had a game the next day. We had to be in bed on a Friday night. We had to, you know what I mean? And, and um, on top of that, as soon as we, we got money, the circumstances that um, we, we come from, that we're living, we, we came from, we just thought, okay, we need to pattern up that situation, fix up that situation. So it was, our first thought wasn't even, our first thought when we started getting money wasn't even, um, Save. Well, for me, I can't speak for everyone else, but my first thought wasn't save. My first thought was... Newest Crips. Pattern. Not Newest Crips. Pattern... Right, my one's Newest Crips in there. Pattern, pattern home, mom. Marge. Mm. Pattern mum. Pattern dad. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's... Um, goes without saying. towards rent. You know what I mean? And um, so I feel like... I feel like we had to... I, I Well, I had to grow up fast, and I feel like a lot of people that play football had similar experiences to me. So I feel like, yeah, footballers, we do... We do grow up fast because we learn responsibilities. And also, we didn't have the uni that go to uni. So at least when you go to uni, you get a student loan, you manage that student loan, you pay your rent and you have to manage. We, we don't learn, we don't have that experience. You know what I mean? We're just given X amount of money from a young age and go and do what you want to do. You get what I'm saying? And when, when you do get money, you're meant to be taught to to save, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we were taught to just pull it back in. So, uh, which is which is not a bad thing. It's it's, it's a great thing, you know. But um, yeah, I just feel like in terms of that, we just had to grow up. We had to grow up quicker than the usual teenager. And I think I think it helped us a lot as well because I know you, I know you. We all grew up in rough backgrounds, and if it wasn't for football, I don't know, hundred percent for me. I wouldn't be where I am today. So I feel like that plays a massive part as well where football's given us another avenue to, to go down because I feel like if we didn't have football, I'd be on the roads. I'd be doing something that I shouldn't be doing. No doubt about that, bro. It definitely saved us. I, we can't even... And, 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 and to the point where we were learning how to manage that behaviour in the footballing environment. Uh, there's a lot of things that we got to buy. You know what I mean? As much as they want to say football don't look out for all of this type of stuff, yeah? There's a lot of things that we got to buy for because they understood where we're coming from. You know what I mean? Who? Um, managers. Well, in my experiences, no so I, 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 in my experiences, I've had arguments or burned out on, on, on managers. And um, I've not got away with it. I've been punished, but they kind of understand it's not an attitude thing. It's not because I've got a bad attitude. It's not because... It's just because I haven't got that emotional intelligence to um, handle myself in a footballing environment. And I learned, I learned along the way. You know what I mean? Because it's hard, bro. you got to understand that we're travelling from council estate to football every day. Back in the estate, chilling on the block. Then going football into a professional environment. You know what I mean? It's hard. How are you gonna know how to behave? It's like you have to learn on the job. You know what I mean? And you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes along the way. Thanks. Um, so it was a process. It was really a process. I do feel that I don't think that managers understand that though. They don't know where we're coming from. Some do. Nah. You don't think? Nah. They, don't. they will never no, do you know what? You're they right. Never. They will never really, really understand. understand. Man's going to training, 
Yeah. And I'm coming back. I don't know if I'm going to get robbed or, or not. Red, red tape and that. She's nuts, bro. No, it's crazy. They they, how, they, how are you going to expect a manager to understand what we go through? If, if I sat down with a manager right now and I told him what we go through, he'll say I'm lying. It's true. Because it's not believable. No, you're absolutely right on that. And, I think, and, right on and that. I think it's only recently, in the last two years, I would say that the man, um, like, man-to-man manager thing, that like, they're taking, like, managers now taking their time to really get to know a player yeah. and his background and where he's from, where in London is from, they're talking to, like, so tell me a bit about yourself and where you're from. Like, back in the days, you think managers cared about all that? True. You come with a you come with an attitude, and like you said, it's not even an attitude like that. It's just that you're not um, like emotionally intelligent like that. But they think this guy's got an attitude. Yeah. But now they they're knowing that maybe it's because he's from this background. Maybe yeah. because this has happened. Let me get to know him and a, a bit more about his family. I think all managers need to do that because if you're going to get the best out of player on the pitch, you need to know. His life. You need to know what he's bringing to the table. You need to know what his past experience has been because <clears throat> you. And there's been days where you've gone to training and you're not on it on match day, and no one's gonna know what you've gone through in the morning. Mm-hmm. You could have got punched up, beaten up before you've got to that game, but no one's gonna know that. So I feel like managers do need to take their time out to really try not everything, but just understand the player so you can get the best out of that player. Bro, it's it's hard, man. It's hard. Like the struggles, the struggles, real. And you see these obstacles that we had to overcome. A little thing, a little thing like this, bumping the train on the way to football. Mm, done that. Wait, Bare do you time. not think? Do you not think that's normal? <clears throat> you know, it's normal to us, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's we don't even think about it. We just bump the train. That's not normal, you know. No, but that's normal to us. That's not normal, bro. I remember there was one time at South End and <laughs> Ox, Ox Larry. Um, you know South Ends. It's, it's an expensive, it's an expensive ticket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah. so can't pay that ticket. So now, jumped on the train. Police are at the station. Police are like, "Where's your ticket?" My pal now is like, "What do you mean? Like, leave me alone. Get off me." No, no, no. And he's like, "Got." And then anyway, one thing's led to another, and. We're outside, He's, we, they, they've escorted us outside the station and we're like, yes, we're outside the station now. So anyway, we're trying to figure out what we're going to do, what's our next move, how are we going to get to South End? How are we going to get to South End? You know what I mean? But let me, not, let me not play it down. We did get into a heated conversation with the, with the ticket inspector, you know what I mean? So anyways, whilst we're figuring it out, walking around, we're trying to like, we're trying to like walk around the back of the station and um, go through the back entrance, yeah? So as I'm walking towards the back entrance, yeah, we're walking on one side of the road and police are walking on another side of the road, you know, and when we cross past that, that police turn around and they just start chasing us. So obviously the guy, the, the, the ticket inspectors have called police for us. You know what I mean? So we're now run, I've got a, you know, I've got a match. Wait, you know, I've got a match that day. Like, <laughs> where's the, where's the extra warm up. Yeah. Extra warm up. Man's warming up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I've actually got a match that day, and now I'm running away from police. Bro, Larry got from Liverpool Street to Enger in about five minutes. <laughs> he ran so fast. I rang him, bro. I, was in, I got to like London Bridge. I rang him, yeah. I'm like, yo, where are you? He's like, yeah, I'm just jumping off the 343. <laughs> I'm like, bro, swear that you're on ends already. Like, you got me. It was mad. But um, yeah, that just goes to show. I got to, the, I got to that game at um, half time. I got to the game at half time. You know, manager didn't understand. I can't tell the manager I just got chased down by police because I can't afford the train ticket. Mm-hmm. But these are just the things that we just go through and we just roll with it. We just roll with it like it's nothing. You know yes. what I mean? And when 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 Billy and Tom is getting a nice Range Rover car driven to, to the match, you're running from police. Exactly, you know what I mean. But we 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 don't. Com- that's the thing about us, and that's it's but it's built us. It's, it's built us to who we are today because we've never complained about these things and we've never used it as an excuse. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We made we made it work, man. We found a way to make it work. And just just when, it's not everyone, but just on what James said, Billy and that are getting driven in a Range Rover, and that, but that's the same people. 
that can't handle when a manager shouting at them, but we can because we've been in that environment That's where it. we know these things are That's happening. it. That's it. You get me? It's true. Nah. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot to speak on. I can't lie to you. We have to save, <laughs> we have to save it though, save man, because <laughs> we'll uh, be yeah, here till next we'll week. Be, we can be here all day, bro. We can be here all yeah. day. But you're talking about um baller talk. What's baller talk to you? What does it mean to you? If someone was to come to you today and say, What's baller talk to you? What would you say? Me? Yeah, I'm always going to come to you. Okay, Mehdi, Mehdi, yeah, Mehdi doesn't... Mehdi has been for about 10 minutes. For me, a ball of talks is... Um, Mehdi, is what you say ball of talks. This ball of talk. <laughs> about, yeah, you're yeah. doing this from young, you know. <laughs> ball, of, ball, of, ball of talk, for me, yeah. is just a, is a place where many of us can come and share experiences uh, and um, life experiences, what we've been through whether it's football, whether it's just real life stuff that goes on with family, friends. Yeah, just come in and talk. Like, it's not a place where you're going to be judged or be looked at in any way. Open book. Yeah, and um, just speak on any topic and anything and speak on things and how you feel about it. Don't, don't be, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't hold back. Just let it all go. If you want to come on and cry here, say something deep, where it's going to get people teary and that, come out and say it. Well, stop holding it in, stop bottling up stuff. Just let it go and we're here to share experiences. That's what it is for me. And what about you? Yeah, um, for me, Baller Talk is purpose-driven. So in the last six to nine months, I've been doing a lot of um, self-development, trying to find myself, you know? And I don't want to go to... Work before work. Work before work, you know. <laughs> training before training, this you guy, know. He wakes up at five a.m. and at seven a.m. and at six o'clock. <laughs> he's in the gym. <laughs> you know, but you know what? You know why when he says that purpose driven? Because you see, when I see Fem, when I wake up, I wake up two hours later. Obviously, because Fem's going in doing his. When I when I go on my thing and I see Fem working. Now that's making me get up, get ready, go for my run, and go to the gym and do something. Because if I don't see that sometimes, and sometimes it's hard to motivate yourself, but I'm lucky I've got people like yourself, Femi, and people on my Snap and on my Instagram that so always doing something that will motivate me to go and do something. That's just that's, that's like um, touching on that. Like when we had, um, I'm sure everyone knows that where we was in a lockdown and we had that period where house party was booming. People was using it for other reasons. I'm not going to disclose that. But... We we used it um, for workouts. Um, what we basically done was there'll be about five, six of us, me, you, Fem, um, Deji, um, who else was there? Manny. Um, and we all just used to go on and just do workouts and everyone would, would do their, their exercises and then everyone would follow. And for me, that's, that's big. That was big for me. That literally got me through... Um, that period of the lockdown and like you said meds it's like motivating each other we were, we're all around each other for a purpose and for a reason um so when 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 you speak on that i just thought i had to put that in because that was a big big moment was, for me it was there was even points where people couldn't even get in the room yeah that's how that's how much of a thing we made it you mm -hmm. know and that's just off us doing something out of passion you know what i mean out of love and Back to my point, even what you just said now, I, remember you, I don't even know if you remember, you sent me a mad, powerful voice note when, when you saw my, um, my snap. Yeah, Jim, do, you yeah. do you remember? Mm, yeah, I remember. And, and that touched me. And, and that's, that, that's, that's, what, that's what happens when you're fulfilling your purpose. It's, you inspire, you know what I mean? And I've learned that along this journey. But um, regarding, yeah, Baller Talk, so I don't want to go too much into it because there's more to the story, but uh, as I was going through this journey, I didn't know who I wanted to become. I didn't know my purpose. So when James proposed this to me about a year ago, I said no. I said no, because I didn't know my purpose. You know what I mean? But once I found that, and once I knew, okay, what, who I want to become, what I want to do, who I want to be, the opportunity came around again, fortunately, you know? And 
this time round, I said, you know what, James? Let's do it. You know what I mean? And that's what, that's what I mean when I say it's purpose because I think this platform is, is here to give back to the youth, you know? There's a lot of things they teach you in football, but there's even more that they don't, you know? And we had to figure that out, what they don't teach us. Now, let's use this platform to um, give back, do you know what I mean? Give that knowledge back to them. Let's use this platform to share our experiences. Let's use this platform to show that we are human beings. You know what I mean? When we play football, that's our, and that's why I liked how you, how you started the interview, how you started the, um, the, the talk here, yeah, because we, we, we play football. Yes, it's our job, but it's not who we are as a human being, you know? I've got an identity away from that. You know what I mean? James got an identity away from that. And the final thing I like to say as well is I want this platform to shed guests in a positive light, you know? Um, a, lot of, a lot of interviews or um, things that, that, talk, that, that, shows, that yeah. talk show that, or that people, footballers do and stuff. Uh, the newspaper always takes away something negative, negative. from... from, from from that interview or whatever, you know what I mean? I want Baller Talk to be a place where we blossom our guests. Um, we see the greatness in our, in, in, in our guests, whoever come on, 100%. we see the greatness. You know what I mean? It's just about empowering. That's what I want the platform to do. I don't want people to, someone to come on the show and then they take away and then he's in the newspaper for something he said. You know, I, I, I want him to be in the newspaper for, for something great. You know what I mean? If, let them see the qualities of him. And that's what I think Bulla Talk is for. I wanted to represent. That's good. For me, I'd, I'd, I'd want to close it on... Bulla Talk is a platform where you're chilled. If I, if I was to describe Bulla Talk for one word, I'd say chilled, relaxed. This is where you can be yourself. This is not a place where you have to act. There's no script. We haven't had a script where we're reading off the scripts and blah, blah, blah. Nah, it's just a place where you can come and be yourself, like what Med said, he's, he's himself. And that's the reason why I brought you lot on this journey with me. Um, I don't want to go too in-depth for it because I don't want to just talk about what Border Talk is. You lot are going to see what Border Talk is. So I appreciate you lot coming here again today. And we'll do this again. That's a wrap. Wrap, back, back. One, two, three.